Yeah, uh, just, just to let people know, I'm building a small dome. It's a 22 foot with a small extension. I'm gonna be using it for a, a day use as a studio, a music studio and an art studio. And the question I have is that um, it's gonna be fairly well insulated. Uh, I don't have any problems in the summer because I'll have some windows that'll slide open for, for air. Um, but I'm wondering in the winter when everything is closed up, um, because I don't have a forced air system in, in the dome, uh, what will be an easy way to ensure that I've got fresh air coming into the dome in the winter time? Uh, would this be an air exchanger? Would this be a, an expensive add-on? Uh, I don't know anything about that. So that's my question. Good question. Uh, Derek, I'm going to let Derek answer this because we, uh, Derek did some research on small ear-to-ear -ear exchangers. So take it, take it away, Derek, and uh, talk about what you found out. Well, for the rest of you, uh, you know, depending on where you're building, of course, makes a huge impact on the needs for ventilation. And Steve's up in Canada, so um, the extreme heat maybe isn't as much of an issue as maybe the cold. I'm not real sure, but um, but they're actually they've really come a long ways with air to air exchangers, and they're becoming um, they're coated in Minnesota. They're they're probably going to be coated everywhere to have to have an air to air exchanger to keep fresh air coming into your home. And again, trying to keep the answer to question short so we can get to as many as possible. There are small units that are only for, I wanna say probably around five to $700 range that you can actually install that would maintain continuous fresh air movement back and forth from the outside and inside your dome while maintaining about 90% efficiency for your heating. So if you have a little space heater in there and it's cold out, the fresh air coming in, you're, you know, you'll be at 90% efficiency for heat loss. Um, and then, of course, there's the passive way, which is just to simply put a small operable skylight in the upper portion of your dome with a, another operable window, maybe in the riser wall or something where you can just get natural airflow through the dome during those seasons where you're able to just get some fresh air. You don't have to really worry about too much about heating or cooling. Um, but they do make small air to air exchangers. I think that would be perfect for a small dome like yours, especially one just one open space where you don't have compartmentalized rooms that okay. need duct work and stuff. So, so you can, you can post the link to that or the details on the chat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is, uh, I will, I, yeah, I'll get a link out there for that. We're, we're kind of the, they're fairly new units. So we haven't had a lot of uh, experience with them or a lot of feedback, but I'll definitely email you the ones I've been looking at. So you can kind of get more. Okay. Um, so. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, our next, um, I'll make a comment on that too, is that this is a really important area because the domes that we do, even the small domes, we're saying tighten the dome up from an air exchange standpoint. The code's out there, the code requires, has been requiring three, maximum three air changes per hour. That code wants to go or is going down to 1.5. So uh, you need fresh air. Uh, not every state, very few states require it. Minnesota, Vermont, and I think Maryland, there might be a couple others that are just um, started to require it. All new housing, all, all of it has to have an air to air exchanger with balanced airflow. It's a little more intricate than just an air exchanger. But we built uh, Bear Creek Dome here in 2005, 2006, and we have an air to air exchanger. So it's worked very well in the wintertime. It's fresh air coming into your house. Okay.